Do you like the nickname Psycho? Oh no, I'm trying to get, a, I'm trying to move away from that. First team, Parade All-American, McDonald's All-American, number 50 retired by North Carolina, ACC Rookie of the Year, four-time first team All-ACC, ACC Player of the Year, Consensus National College Player of the Year, three-time Consensus First Team All-American, and NCAA Champion. Andrew Tyler Hansborough, born November 3rd, 1985. Hansborough is arguably the most decorated college basketball player of his era, and definitely in North Carolina basketball program history. Who could have foreseen him eventually only playing seven seasons in the NBA? Although he was as decorated as they come as an amateur, it wasn't difficult to notice where at least a few of his stunts would come. Let's get into it. Salute to Marquez Underwood for this request. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth. Let's get it, man. I want to ask you guys to please like this video as it helps YouTube promote it more, leading to me releasing more of the features you asked for and more giveaways and content from the channel. If you don't mind, also subscribe by hitting the red button below as that helps motivate me to put in the time and research to bring you the best efforts. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Okay, let's get back to it. Life and sports go hand in hand in that every level you ascend, you will find they're vastly different than the previous. The goal is to prepare yourself for what's to be faced on those future levels. That way, you will dominate the one you're on and also be ready for the next. Sounds easier said than done, that's because it is. In basketball and mainly the professional level, the game can change on you before you even realize, and then you're stuck with the preparation you've put hours and hours in the gym honing. There's also aspects on said new level that are totally out of your control. This may be the biggest stun of all for guys we consider underachievers or busts in the NBA. There's no choosing which team drafts you. There's no demanding touches as a rookie. There's no system built around you for four years with a coaching staff and comfort you can count on coming in. And there's no guarantee, no matter how high you're selected. Derrick Rose was the youngest MVP ever and a few seasons later, he was traded away and everyone moved on. Isaiah Thomas averaged damn near 30 and that very off season was dealt for a guy they thought was better and he never recovered. Then there's guys like Tyler Hansborough, who's possibly the best power forward I've seen play college basketball, who put up better numbers and was more decorated than a guy in Tim Duncan who will be inducted in the Basketball Hall of Fame in just a few months. What's the biggest difference between these two? Well, stunt number one, the game changed. As Tyler said himself in an interview reflecting on his career, his biggest stunt, which sort of ties into everyone he's had, is that the NBA game changed right as he entered the NBA in 2009 as the 13th overall pick. Of course, entering the league with the best shooter the NBA has ever seen in Steph Curry was a huge element of that change, but also, the game was going to change anyway. That's just the way it is. The great thing about our game is how often it changes and seeing the players who are able to survive that change. The NBA's fastest paced team during the 2008-09 season would be its slowest this season. The team that led the league in three-pointers per game attempted that same year would rank 27th today. This style of play has been in the making since at least 2010 and has been brewing since the Nash era, although still cooking on the back burner. Made popular and ready to eat after the Warriors won their first chip in 2015 and hasn't been the same since. Tyler's back to the basket game seemed archaic compared to the style coaches and every franchise was now looking for from their bigs. Hansborough is a natural bruiser kind of guy. You know the guy the coach always made you shove the ball inside to, every possession down the floor, post pass, post pass, inside outside, inside outside. I've always hated that style of play and this may be why some of you ask for more front court players and I'm like, no! No, God, please, no, 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 no! Tyler benefited from that era, and now that the game changed on him, he couldn't survive and adjust. I already laid out how good this guy was in high school and college. You don't get that way without putting in hours and hours shooting hook shots, 
drop shoulder layups, and post seals. Problem is, in his NBA era, none of that really mattered if you couldn't step out, shoot the mid-range, three-pointer, and play off the pick and roll. Stunt number two, in the name of winning. To me, Tyler's second stunt came because he stayed in college too long. He missed the last bit of window for bigs with his skill set and size. He did it for a good reason, because he wanted to win a national championship, but that sacrifice came with a price of a shortened NBA career. Hansborough was a McDonald's All-American, co-MVP of the Jordan brand classic game, recruited by all the big schools, but chose maybe the most prestigious of them all in North Carolina. He ended his freshman season as the first ACC first team All-American freshman, freshman of the year on all ballots and averaged 18.9 points and 7.8 rebounds a game. Want to know how many threes he took that season? Two. Made one, missed the other. Yes, he was a beast inside, but he was unknowingly setting himself up for failure. Hansborough would go on to become an AP First Team All-American for the next three straight years. As a sophomore, he was First Team All-ACC, climaxing in a win over the Duke Blue Devils, where before breaking his nose on Gerald Henderson's elbow, he already had 26 points and 17 rebounds. He averaged virtually the same numbers that season. At this point, it was clear that Hansborough was good enough to enter the draft. If you ask me, he should have left after that amazing freshman run he had in 05-06, the year power forwards could still live at least another 3-4 years. Some speculate that he didn't have the guidance to tell him he was wasting his prime in college, but for Tyler, he valued winning a national title, and I don't think anyone could have foreseen the game changing the way it did. Had he entered in the late 90s like Tim Duncan did, he may have had a better shot, but obviously that wasn't the case. He still had a chance in 2006 to about 2010, but him staying another two years in college all but tarnished that chance for him to really be effective in the league and carve out a lengthy career. As a junior is where he really shined, averaging a career high 22 points a game and 10 rebounds, all while shooting 0.23s a game for a 0% average. He was the National Player of the Year, ACC Player of the Year, ACC Tournament MVP, and NCAA Regional MVP. He'd return for his senior season for some reason, where he'd have similar success and eventually win his first national championship with Ty Lawson, Danny Green, and Wayne Ellington. He entered the draft after using his four-year eligibility. Just to mention, he was 4-0 at Duke throughout his career. Stunt number three, bigger and badder. At 6'9", 240 pounds, Tyler Hansborough is basically the same size as LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, Paul George, and Jason Tatum. He's shorter than Kevin Durant, Giannis, and Ben Simmons. All these guys can or solely play the point position or point forward. Tyler no longer possessed the advantages that saw him shine in college and no longer intimidated players that were even shorter or smaller than him. Guys like Tyler Hansborough are sought after and some feel the perfect size, height, mentality to try to block everything and resume for a poster. This wasn't college any longer, where only 1.2% of the players make it to the NBA. 100% of these guys are now on your level or higher, have been a star somewhere else, are invested in by their franchises, and view the game as their only way to feed themselves and their families. In other words, you're food out there if you lack in any area. Tyler was on the short end of the big spectrum, and he wasn't mean enough to enforce his will like a Draymond Green does. In my opinion, he should have fought Metta World Peace when he was clearly challenged. That would have given him some much needed tough juice to add to his bag. That bullying and back down was seen by players, fans, coaches, and GMs. I even think it may have been a meme. He averaged 8 points and 4 rebounds as a rookie, 11 points, 5 rebounds his second season, and declined over the next 5 seasons in the NBA. He played for the Toronto Raptors and Charlotte Hornets before the G League and presently in China. 
All in all, Hansborough was an amazing amateur player that represented what the NCAA wants from its participants and a great example for any player wanting to take the four-year route. He was one of the greatest players ever in the early to mid-2000s and I'll even go as far as saying the last 20 years of amateur basketball. But he just wasn't cut to have success in the NBA because of the game changing on him, him missing his opportune window, and the NBA being a level he just couldn't dominate. He seems like a great person, and I'm sure he's content with what he's done in the game. And that's all you can ask for. Salute to him. I wish him all the best. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth, and I'm out.